Welcome to Bioinformatics Expert. In this video, I want to show you how you can perform a differential gene expression analysis with the web tool Bioinformatic Tools Online. Also, we want to compare the output of the three commonly used programs for differential gene expression analysis, DSEC, DSEC2, and Etcher. As example data sets, I downloaded six random FASTQ files from the Array Express database. I grouped them into three control and three treated samples and aligned them with the program HISA2. As output, sequence alignment files or so called SUM files were created. Finally, as I told you in the last video about post processing, I converted the SUM format files into BUM format and sorted them with the program SUM tools. OK, this is where we start today. When you click on the data repository button, you see the output of the six SUM tools runs. You also see that each run created an output BUM file. However, if we want to keep track of the files, I suggest to rename them. Just click on the rename button and enter a string to describe your file. So now I renamed all the files and now we can start PCAR mark duplicates to remove duplicates from the BUM files. Click on the analysis button to access the tools. Now select PCAR mark duplicates from the table. Now select the sorted BUM file. Now select in the parameter table what you want to do. As I told you in my last video, I would suggest to remove the optical duplicates only. Start the analysis. And now we repeat that step with all other sorted BUM files. OK, let's fast forward a little bit. And now I skip the waiting time until the tools have finished. Now when we go to the data repository, we see the results of the PCAR runs. Again, we see that each run created the same output file name. And we can now change the name again to keep track of our samples. Now we have the final BUM files with which we can perform the feature counts run. Select it in the table and select the output file from the PCAR runs. As I said in the last video, feature counts is counting now the reads which assign to specific genomic features. So it is highly important to select the same reference as was used in the alignment step. Let's fast forward again. And skip the analysis time. Let's go to the data repository and take a look at the results of the feature count runs. This is the most important output file. It contains the raw counts which are used by the differential gene expression algorithms to calculate the differential gene expression. We have to rename the files now because it is not possible to assign two files with the same name to the same program run. OK, let's start with DSEC2. And I suggest that we use the latest available version, which is 1.28.0. Here we see that we now have to select the files which contain the raw counts from the control samples. 
And now we have to select all files which belong to the treated group. Now press the continue button and start the analysis. An R script is now performed which calculates the differential gene expression. You can see its progress in this analysis window. And you can also see all the packages which are used with their versions. One of the most important results file is this. It contains all results as a sorted table. When we download it, you can see in the first column the gene ID, the log twofold change is in the third column, and the last column contains the adjusted p-value. This is used to discriminate the differential expressed genes. So the question is now, what happens when we use a different program? In Bioinformatic Tools Online, there is also DSEC and Etcher available. So I suggest that we use the same input files for DSEC and Etcher and at the end compare the analysis results. Like in DSEC2, when you start DSEC, then you first have to select the files which contain the control samples. And in the second step, the files of the treated samples. Again, you can see the process of the run in the analysis info window. And at the end, you can see the packages with their version numbers. So as you can see, the sorted results file has the same file name. So let's download it. And here you can see the table format of a DSEC result. The gene ID in the first column, the log twofold change in the sixth column, and the adjusted p-value again in the last column. Okay, let's start the same analysis with Etcher. And after it has finished, you see that we again get a sorted list file as a result. The Etcher results table contains the ID in the first column the log twofold change value in the second column and the adjusted p-value here calculated as a false discovery rate in the last column. Okay, but how comparable are the results right now? So what I did, I extracted from each method the differentially expressed genes, that means the genes which have an adjusted p-value or a false discovery rate of below 0.05. I then plotted the log twofold change values of those genes for each of the methods. So what we see is that when we compare DSEC and DSEC2, we see that there is a straight line. That means the fold change values are calculated in a similar manner. We also see that this is true when we compare Etcher and DSEC2. However, when we compare the number of differentially expressed genes, which were identified by the different methods, then we see the following. Interestingly, with DSEC2, more than 7,700 genes were identified to be differentially expressed. Only 5,000 were identified with Etcher and 3,400 with DSEC. Also, there are genes which were detected by all three methods to be differentially expressed. Some of the genes were only detected by two or even only one method. That means the method itself can influence if a gene is differentially expressed or not. And this is important when we speak about reproducible data analysis. So you should keep in mind that different programs can create different results. Also, they were created for the same purpose. 
So please always stick at your pipeline, which you used for your initial analysis when you increase your sample number, for example. Okay, what I also want to show you is that not only the program or the algorithm defines the output, but also different program versions. For that, I'm currently starting all available DSEC2 version numbers here with our data sets, and we will then in the end compare the results. Okay, after all analysis have finished, we can now go to the data repository and download all the results tables. With those, we can now compare the identified differentially expressed genes between the different DSEC2 versions. So what you see here are so-called Venn diagrams. Those show you the overlap of the identified differentially expressed genes. For example, here we see that DSEC2 in version 116.1 identified exactly the same differentially expressed genes like DSEC2 version 118.0. When we now go to later versions of DSEC2, we see quite a difference. For example, version 128.0 detects 18 genes more to be differentially expressed than version 116.1. On the other hand, DSEC2 version 116.1 detects 13 genes more than DSEC2 version 128.0. You might say that this is quite a small difference here. However, if you depend on the genes for your downstream analysis, for example, if you want to identify biomarkers for a specific biological process, then losing 18 genes might be not so good. So please keep in mind that if you repeat an analysis later with more data, then try to stick at the same program versions as you did in your initial analysis. With Bioinformatic Tools Online, you will be able to do that because it is planned that although if a program is released in a newer version, the old versions remain in the web tool. Okay, so in this video I showed you how you can do a differential gene expression analysis with the program Bioinformatic Tools Online. I also showed you how different programs can create different results and that also the program version can influence the outcome. So if you want to use the program Bioinformatic Tools Online in your research, then write me an email or visit my webpage.